Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Um, somebody give me a sound check. Let me know if you hear me okay. No, it's not that I want. I want this one. I want this one. Share. Click go. Uh, testing one, two, three. Somebody give me a sound check. Let me know if you hear me okay. Sound is good. Crossy, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Oh, so much cool stuff to show you today. I think everything is really coming together in a beautiful, uh, beautiful way. Um, all right, let me uh, post this in the uh, in the room again. It's private t private TV um, at question mark. In case you guys have not have not installed all four indicators on the chart, um, which uh, which I really recommend because because they're all tweaked up. They're all ooh, wow, look at look at it moves down. Um, actually, let me, sorry, let me just do one other thing, which is I need to put the session tool on here. Yes. Okay. And then put the session tool on here too, so that we can, uh, yes. Okay. That's good. Um, okay. So that we can, uh, we, we can have both of them. Oh, this is, oh, this is the ES. I don't want the ES. Ah, maybe we'll take the ES as well. That's fine. That's fine. Um, Okay, so everybody is everybody is, is is good with the new tools. I, I changed the uh, the nomenclature a little bit. There's basically um, trend, dip, uh, which by the way needs to be set at. Sorry, let me ooh, look at this nice moves to the downside. Uh, dip should be set at five. I don't know why I had it at two. That should be set at five and trend is set at two and then there's no other settings at all. Okay, super. So, um, okay. Um, let me know, just let me know if you guys all have the, uh, the new tools, you know, which are pretty much there, right? Had a big dip off um, off the bottom. There's this pretty serious divergence between the Dow and uh, the Nasdaq today. I mean, Dow is is up, Nasdaq is down. Um, and it's kind of interesting. And uh, what I want to show you, basically, is how uh, the whole thing now comes uh, comes together, in my opinion. Um, but first of all, everybody has the tools. Everybody's good. Let me know, yeah? Any problems installing them? Okay, all right. So, um, and this is obviously relative, relative to, to the one minute uh, for us. What we are looking for, for our structure, is we're looking for a trend to be established. And then after that, almost every signal should be working. Now, obviously, you're going to get cases like this where you know the second or the third signal fails. You know the trend R, tre you know trend reversal uh, trend signals uh, fail a little bit here. Or I mean, in my case, if you had if you had done a like a five or a seven, no, actually this one worked. This this was um, this entry worked over here. But um, the point being is that you know you're not you're not always going to get the perfect trend move. Um, a good way to understand of like what I what I want is a perfect um, trend move is this. Um, so let's just take a perfect trend case. Okay, here's a perfect, just here's a perfect trend case. You have a trend starting, and then essentially, um, every single sell signal you take is gonna be making money. Just keep going, 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 keep going right? Keep going, you have like three, four, five consecutive, six, seven signals. Because as long as we have a continuous trend, these signals are optimized for excellent entry, um, and you're pretty much assured that you're going to be even, um, I think even, you know, if, if you took this one, it probably resolves somewhere around here, right? So let's just say this is a um, 78. We, we're looking for the trade for 10. So this, this resolves over here. This one is 74, right? So this is 74. 
we give ourselves 20, this actually survives the 20 move, comes back down um, and resolves over here, right? And um, in this particular case, you have like literally six consecutive good signals until you eventually hit the, um, hit the stop out trade over here uh, on this move. And this is obviously, I think this is yesterday in front of CPI. So you probably, you should have just basically stopped trading by seven o'clock because you're positioning yourself for the CPI. But here is where this requires um, some very, very serious um, analysis and, and, and filtration. Where the algo or where the strategy gets in trouble is when there is no trend separation. Trend separation should be defined as the cloud moving away, moving away from the 200 period SMA. Once you have the cloud moving away from 200 period SMA, right? Um, then you have high degree of confidence that trend is established, it's reestablished, right? So we have good, 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 strong downtrend. Then we have news. We just stand back on the news. We watch the news. And then we're actually looking for this white space in trend, right? And so, yes, um, you know, you're going to get, uh, you, you're going to get some, some flaws also, even in this in best case, last case scenario, you're going to get some flaws because things are definitely going to uh, bust a little bit um, to the, you know, to the downside. But um, even with that, by staying to the trend, you're actually going to uh, do much better than, um, um, than just following every single signal. So I'm long here, this signal works. I'm, sh I'm, I'm long here on the dip. I, I get stopped out because we have a big, big reversal into the market uh, or like a 1030 open, right? However, here's, this is, this is a very, very critical uh, point. You see this trend sell signal? Just like this trend buy, even though this trend buy signal actually would have worked, just like you ignore that. The, the way to avoid the initial choppiness around the 200 SMA, because remember, it only works when it, once it starts to pull away from the 200 SMA, is to literally ignore the first um, signal in, in the new trend, right? So this is a first, this is the first signal in an uptrend. Everything here was a downtrend, right? Down, down, down. First signal in, a, in, in an uptrend, you ignore it. You, you, you give up the profit, even if, it, if there's a profit, until you get a second one. The second signal by its very definition, is going to occur in the white space. The white space is going to happen. That's going to give you a much higher um, possibility of profit than, um, um, than just jumping on the first signal. Just, just over here, you avoid the sell signal, right? Then you actually have, this now becomes the first buy signal as we kind of reverse. You avoid that too, give it up. The second buy signal already creates the white space between the 200 SMA and the cloud. That's when you want to enter and you go long. Sorry, let me crawl this long, long, long. And you get the picture. You get you, you literally you can't you know you go four five six um, six points before sometimes even seven points before um, before you you encounter any kind of a so this is the you know this is the first stop and um, I think you get like one two three um, winners uh, four winners five winners six um, depending you know depending on also whether you're using five no I think this this one doesn't even survive the five this one just just blows up. Um, so six one, then seven one. Um, I think this is this reversal over here. I'm not sure where is this. Forty six down to yeah, you survived this if you use the twenty. Um, like an eight one, and uh, we had this crazy dip. That, I remember this dip yesterday. That was a crazy dip at the fifteen hundred hour. So that's seven two, but then you get eight two, nine two. You just keep on going. You really keep on going for quite a while. Um, until you eventually, um, even this is just not, is, is a minor, minor slip. It goes into like 10 points against you. And then I actually traded this and it comes right back up to, to 10. So the whole idea is you stay true to the, um, uh, to the longer term trend. And this is where you're getting that 10 to two, you know, a nine to two, seven to two ratios on a, on a one to two risk reward ratio. So, you know, you, you're well above the, uh, the break even rate, right? Um, then I, I always, I would always, after like the 2,100 hours, I pretty much stopped. Like there's no reason to trade, to trade um, the late Asia, early European session because it tends to be very choppy and around the 200 SMA. But, um, you know, if you wake up like into early European session, you have red signal, red signal, two red signals, you know, continuously. Then you have confidence. Yeah, okay, maybe perhaps a new trend is starting. So you short this, you short this, you short this. And you could have gone on 
um, all the way until about you know four o'clock um, in the morning. Um, and again, you stopped over here because you didn't take this buy signal because it wasn't confirmed. You get a sell signal here. You give it another, You also give up the profit here. Keep going to this sell signal. This made a little bit of money. Remember, um, in early Europe, I like to trade pretty much with a five target because you're just not going to get the full ten target most of the time. Um, now you have a change um, to the you know to to, to the uh, buy structure around six. You give up this signal, even though obviously you know you could have made money. Um, and then you just trade you trade the next buy signal, which also worked over here, um, you know, to the upside. Um, so nothing is ever perfect, especially when you have kind of a choppy market that's moving around. But what this does is it allows you to sidestep, sidestep. So right now we have a, we have a we have a sell signal here. Like let's get short here because that's uh, oh where's my thing? I'm late because I'm talking. But let's get I'm short like 57s. Let's see if um, if this works. Uh, for you know, with a 10 with a 10 20 i think i oh and it got done jesus i got done super fast wow oh no i was i, was, I got done on five i'm sorry so so that got done on five but like if, it, if you're looking for for you know for for more you could you could have made more so um again my you know my uh, i remember we talked about that i was going to try and trade offline because i can't do both at the same time the point being is that this is the second sell signal in the um in the sequence and therefore much higher, you, you, you have that white uh, space separation, right? And that allows you to come in with much higher degree of confidence there's gonna be continuity in the, um, um, in the trend, right? So now you're just basically operating with the idea that trend is continuous to the downside, right? So we have two signals, two signals or more, we're continuous to the downside. And we just try and see if we can take um, any, any, any additional signals that we can, um, you know that pop that pop themselves up, uh, but that kind of a filter, that sort of like final filter of what is trend. You know what is really trend. How do you get trend separation? It's the best. You know it's the best way. Given given our indicators, the best way to do this. And the whole point is that if we if we find ourselves into that trend run where we can do two, three, four consecutive running um, winning trades, that's where we. You know that's that's where we're putting up. Um, the, the, the high probability winners. Um, and you know, all right, our ideal is to go four winners, one loser, like into a trend trade um, on a, you know, in a couple of runs a day. If you, if you may have two runs a day of four winners, one loser, you're, you're golden. Um, you're not gonna get that obviously every single day, but that's what's possible if you use this kind of structure. Um, so does that make sense to everybody? Um, the beauty of, of like having a lot of indicators overlaid is that is that we really don't need to be um, too. As long as we've defined trend, you know, remember, as long as we define our bias properly, almost any signal will work. So what we're looking for is just simply the next, you know, the next realistic best level for us to get long or short. Um, and they're all, you know, they're all designed to basically try and get um, best price entry you can. Um, so let me know. Let me know what you think. Now um, you know we don't have any, we obviously don't have any uh, any additional sell signals in the uh, in the cycle. This you know this this red cloud is is uh, pretty much done. I think as far as sell signals, we only have what do we have? Momentum uh, we, reversal would only mean would mean we have to have a red uh, green cycle, um, and maybe we you know maybe we might get a dip signal um, a dip sell. So we'll look at that. In the meantime, um, the trend that's strong is the uh, is the upside trend. Um, the trend here is the um, uh, the, uh, the Dow trend to the upside, um, and we could, uh, you know, we should actually. I mean, this this signal is a little bit weak, but let's um, let's trade this. Where am I? Uh, where's my? Oh, sorry, I'm on the uh, on the ES. So ES is not what I want. I want the Dow. Dow has been.
Um, so this signal worked. Now we know now we're in the opening rotation. Kind of looks ugly, so I'll stand back. I'll have to. I'm going to wait for the next buy signal to come in um, and give me a signal on the Dow because uh, we're you know moving into red territory. You know, obviously, I, I, this is opening rotation, so we, got, we would have gotten clipped if we dove into it. But um, and let me see what's happening on the uh, on the S and P here. S and P also is basically you know buy limit bias. This first you ignore the first one, the second one works fine. The third one is 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 opening rotation. So again, you have to ignore it. Um, and now we have to see what uh, you know what what the next uh, um, next thing brings. Nasdaq seems to be turning now a little bit, but still Nasdaq is still still negative bias. So, so far we just took the first five points out of NASDAQ to the downside. And right now I just don't have any, any legitimate uh, trades. If I can get a dip um, in a Dow, I would take it. Uh, so far, no. Uh, I need five. You know, I need a sequence of five lows, which is which is actually coming up. So Dow might be might be setting up for for an interesting dip trade. Let's let's uh, anticipate this a little bit here. Where are we? This is one, two, three, four. We would need the fifth fifth candle to break to the downside uh, as a dip trade. I'm going to uh, like front run this a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can buy the uh, the twenty nines. Just for a little bit of a bounce. I mean, I may be too early. I'm always a little bit too early, but now that worked. Um, just because I, did, I thought I thought like the five low might be a little bit hard. Now, if there's a, if there's an, if if this thing makes a fresh low, then that's going to give us a dip by. Um, but you get the idea of like you know you notice signals, you close to the signal, you're trading on the right side of the uh, of the bigger of the bigger bias. It creates a much higher probability trade. So it's like another second, second good high probability trade for us. But it doesn't doesn't look like we're gonna get a dip signal here. So because I had a feeling that it was only gonna be good for four for four down candles, not five. Um, but we'll see. Nas is turning, I think. Right, Nas is turning a little bit. Um, so the other thing is the Dow is obviously going to a couple more candles. We're going to break out to a turn trade, um, you know, turn reversal trade through this uh, through this red cloud if it if it goes higher. Um, we'll see we'll see if that works also. So NAS is negative bias, but now it's, it's you know it's turning totally uh, uh, totally up. Uh, mm. You know what's interesting? I'm actually curious. So it looks like we might have a dip sell here because we have one, two, three, four. If this thing, you know, scrolls up to like the fifth, fifth high, high move, um, might get a dip sell here. I have to see. Because remember, the bias is still down. Like we're still, you know, the cloud hasn't even come close to breaking through the uh, uh, 200 SMA. Uh, unfortunately, 
I'm actually curious if we gave it, if I, if I had the dips set up at four, that would give me a signal. Oh, so, oh, oh yeah, yeah. You know why it wasn't gonna give it to me? Because it's, it's just starting to, to build it. I, it was coming out of the red zone. It needs to be all in the green zone for it to be a dip zone. Sorry. However, I'm actually curious. Oh, also same thing here. This um, dip by, I wonder if it was, if I set it to three, if that would have triggered it. I'm just curious to see, because I think the problem is that, it, you know, on the moving averages, yeah, there it is. Oh, now it's, now it's just, now, just now it's a three dip by to, uh, Oh, that would have been a good. That would have been a good trade, but I, mean, I really want to stick to the to the five um, five setting because um, um, you, you know you, you get you can get too uh, too promiscuous as far. I'd rather have harder barriers to cross. So what's happening now is actually the Dow is is kind of coming all the way down. And now it's effectively, you know, into the into the big negative bias zone. Uh, very un, at this point, it's it's pretty unclear. So you have to let it go, let it be. Um, this, on the other hand, if I were to set this, just I'm just curious if I were to set this on a three cycle. Oh, let me see. See if this. Uh, I'm surprised. I guess, oh, one, two, three. This should be the, this should be a dip cell. Yeah. Okay, that's a two. So okay, I'm uh, you know I'm basically trying to create signals <clears throat> um, because I'm trying to just create a couple more trades for us. But I like this trade. Let's take this trade. We're gonna give this like ten seconds, eight nine seconds. Trade sell the eighty twos um, against the trend. Let's see. I mean the the Nas all does come back sharp in V shaped recoveries. But I think there's a reasonable chance here we'll, we'll retrace, but we'll see. We'll give ourselves a little, a little wiggle room here. Down to 78, you know, it may, it may run away. The, you know, the proper dip cell should have been, as you can see, um, and at this point it's, it's, it's touching the, um, uh, the moving average. So it's kind of, it's, it's really moved. It's, it's trying, to, trying to basically change bias, but I, don't, I think the bias is um, still gonna be down just for the near term, so. Um, let's give this a shot a little bit more. See if the five, um, we need 78s, 77.50s. Oh, I got a bad exit. Oh, 82.50, I, I, I can't count. All right, you know what? Let's make this into a, into a four, just because. Oh, how come that didn't get me done? That went all the way down to, um, what was the low here? 78.25, how did that, oh, it must not, there must not have been enough liquidity there. Wow, that was, that was crazy. Whoa, how did that not get me done? Oh, that sucks. That was just, that, there must have been just too little liquidity. It doesn't make any sense why they wouldn't, they wouldn't have executed me. Wow, it was 25 and it, I guess it must've been, let's see. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna close it out because 
Um, Cause that was a very, very funky liquidity. Okay, done anyway. So this it's like four off of this, but you can see now the whole, um, the market is, is just really indecisive. I mean, you know, we don't have any, any clear trend right now, but you, you see, it's just, you know, bopping up and down, but we're trying to stay out of the way as much as possible of this, um, of this back and forth by only selecting um, the most intelligent entries, you know, point entries. Like this was, you know, I mean, I, this dip sell was, was really manufactured by me. It sh it, I should never have a setting less than three. And I had a setting of, uh, of two here. Um, I'm actually interested. Oh, and, and the, the thing was that it, it set it off. And then once this crossed over the moving average, the dip sell setting goes away. Anyways, what's happening now is that we're getting the, uh, the trend buy signal here. Um, uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. I, 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 the, the, I made the alerts incredibly annoying for myself. Um, yes, if there's a signal along the SMA line, you kind of want to stand aside. And the rule, Brenda, the, the sort of logical rule that I set for myself is I pass on the first signal. Right. Because the assumption, the logical assumption doesn't always work, but like works 90 percent of the time. Is that if, if by the time if I have a second buy signal, that means trend is established. You see how like this trend signal just kind of died on us, right? Totally. Um, and that's the reason, I, you know, I, I'd rather pass up the opportunity than take the risk on the first move. Because because would you, the, our strategy works great once we have a trending market. And in order to have a trending market, we need some, you know, um, some evidence like the best evidence of a trending market is when you have moving average separation between 200 and the cloud. Um, and the best way to, to see that is when you have more than a couple of signals. Once you have a couple of signals along the cloud, by that by very definition is gonna create, um, even, you know, even in this very, very choppy environment, you see one signal, two signal, right? It still creates enough of a cloud to give you, um, to, you, know, to give you directionality um, you know, to the downside, right? Um, and that's the key. That's the key. But what you know, what you're hoping for is that you get like a like a five, six, seven continuation. Look at it. This what I don't know why we just completely reversed, but that was a very, very ugly reversal. Um, you know, to the downside. And um, um So we have the first sell signal here. Again, we're going to wait in, in a DAO to get a second sell signal on a DAO. Where's the uh, S&P? S&P has been super quiet. S&P actually had, the, and again, it's so, so tight that it's just, you know, it's almost nothing. But it did have a second. You see the second sell signal? That was a decent signal. You could have taken that for a move, just like a second buy signal was a quality signal. Um, just like a second, you know, buy signal here was problematic but would have worked for you um you know all the way through and you can see this is a so just kind of guide you through first well no this is not this is actually not the first signal in, in the trend the trend starts over here so you ignore this first buy signal you take this one this is all essentially all the same signal you take this one it's a second you know buy signal you take this one it goes a little bit against you, but I think you actually make, you know, you're able to, um, you're looking just for one point, you make the one point over here. You take the fourth one over here, that works. Um, this is a sell signal, you know, that, that barely touches. So you could just choose to either ignore it or ignore this one and go off with this one. So that's already, you're talking about four buy signals that are resolving your way. Um, and then eventually, you know, you, you are, no, even, I think even this buy signal, this dip buy signal works for a final one. And then this one fails. So you have like a, like the um, um, seventh signal in a cycle fail. And then you have two cell signals here. You ignore the first one, you take the second one and that works nicely, right? Um, meantime, just still, you, you, you see like a complete choppiness of, of movement here. Um, we need like a, we would need two cell signals here for us to, um, uh, 
uh, to initiate any kind of a cell trait. But you guys, you guys are seeing what I'm showing you, right? I mean, yeah, look at this. The market just really doesn't know what it wants to do. And it feels like it's, it's honestly, it feels like it's, uh, um, setting up, you know what I was gonna say is, so there's a really interesting correlation um, between the 10 year and NASDAQ. So in other words, as rates go up, NASDAQ goes down. NASDAQ's been super weak, right? Um, rates have come up a little bit, like even two basis points. Um, that's been pressing on the NASDAQ. But look, right now, NASDAQ is, is starting to turn around. I wonder what is the 10 years? The 10 years kind of topped out. Looks like a 10 year sort of top, the rates have kind of topped out on the trend, right? So if these rates start to come back down, then the 10 year, um, then the NASDAQ starts to, uh, starts to pop back up. Um, you know, and if we wanna just, we just wanna play, we could probably play the NAS. Where's my NAS? So if we get like a, like a second buy signal here, somewhere along the line, that would be a legitimate buy signal for us. But the NASDAQ is just literally floating. Um, yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? This is what I'm gonna do. I wanna, hang on a second, let me see if I can. I'm sorry guys, I'm just gonna, I'm moving my windows around in a way that, um, uh, for some reason I have a hard time here, but maybe if I move it from here to here, yeah, this is much better. Okay, so then I'll, I'll be down. Let me see something. Okay, here we go. Yeah, let me see if that works. Cool. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna have my trading screen below you, below the screen, and then I can bring it back up. Um, you know, would you scalp the NASDAQ to the upside? I, I, I you know, I, I'm taking it. This is completely a uh, 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 dump. You know, I took, I took a quick, hit here see if i can get four points out of it but you know it's just a it's it's a pure i don't even know what it is just a pure i'm just front running this this turn into the upside which is just nonsense but let's give it a shot let's see what i need 75 let's see if we can get 75 out of it jesus wow it's really uh having a hard time probably not i probably got faked out into this move but I mean, this is not a signal in any way, shape, or form. It's just me fooling around. But following the the reversal price action, which is what the Nasdaq seems to be doing, given the there you go, I got the seventy five. I got another another four points. So just a small amount today is kind of a very small small scalping day. But um, um, you know, we are you know we, we have a buy signal here. We're turning a little bit up, and I'm just kind of using our um, thesis that we're getting a little more confirmation to the upside. But that's that's the bias we should you know we should start looking be looking for. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Why do I have a? Oh, that's interesting. The. Oh. Is that? This should be a turn reversal sell. For some reason, some of these signals are not popping up. Well, we'll see. It needs to close through the uh, through the cloud.
when you get very, very tight markets like this, it's really interesting. Um, and the price action is just all over the place. I actually get discrepancy in indicators between my, my MT5 and my trading view. Like MT5 saw this as a um, uh, turn sell when it really wasn't on, on uh, trading view. Wow, look at this, look at that choppy uh, price action. Let's um, let's take a look at it. Remember YM, YM was looking a little bit more negative, right? So it's definitely starting to look a lot more negative. Let's see if we get any kind of uh, sell signals out of YM. They're all super quiet. I mean, you know, you just, you're not going to get a lot of price action. It's typical Friday where usually we, you know, we, we get chopped to death on Friday, but today we're, we're actually staying out of harm's way most of the time, which is really good. So basically twiddling our thumbs here. Doesn't look good, right? I mean, really like press action is just kind of, but it's too early to tell. This is usually the first half hour. You're always gonna get a lot of chop. Um, and it may very well be sort of like very inconclusive this whole day. When it's like this, when it's very inconclusive, you know, there's not much for us to do. We just have to stand back um, and not take, you know, not fall for any stupid trades. You are um, just trying to trying to create a new new negative slice here. So. Um, oh, I know why this isn't doing it. This is probably. I think I know why why it wasn't. Let me see if this was giving me, where's my reversal? Yeah, because if I were doing, I would, it, oh, I know what it's because that's why the difference. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry guys. I didn't, I, I had the MACD signal enabled. That's why this triggered on the MT5. It's got nothing to do with the diff discrepancies. I had that, the MT filter uh, signal. So this actually triggered a, um, a cell. Although that would not be, again, not, um, not a um, um, signal for us, you know? And actually, you know what, guys? Um, I should, if we're gonna do this um, in the settings, I need to um, unclick the um, enable MACD filter. What that does is, it, is, is it, it'll take any, any of the turn cell signals um, into, um, into account, because that's the way I have it on the algo, which I'm gonna be releasing uh, tomorrow for the, uh, for the class. And we'll just keep it that way. Keep those settings though, you know, the way they are. Um, so, okay, we're putzing around, not really, you know, um, having any kind of a trend. We're, we're married to the 200 period SMA until we start pulling away. Um, there really is very little to do, you know. Um, we, you know we just have to hang out. And now we really need, like, if it's going to get, if it's if it's going to be a you know a buy signal, um, on a legitimate basis, we really need you know two buy signals to confirm the move. I mean, market is very very direction directionless right now, so there's nothing you know not much you can do. But it's, how's the uh, still still off those two signals in the ES? And the YM, so YM is kind of deep into the sell zone, really 
needs to come back up and come back down for us to give us any kind of a sell signal. So again, nothing much to do. But I think you guys are getting the idea, you know, um, of how, when, and, and what to do when you have the, um, you know, the setup. Um, what I was going to say is, while this is so quiet right now, we can take a look at the at the longer term charts um, on FX, and that's really where it shines. That that's where a lot of these ideas really, really shine. Because on longer term, you know, here here you go. You have you know you have the first. This is the, the you know the daily. And if you if even if you used the you know the daily filter, meaning you know you ignore the first signal, you only start with the second signal. You basically have winner winner. You know, I, obviously on the dailies, I, I would be using um, a 200 point stop. Um, you know, maybe for maybe for a Kiwi 150 point stop, but like really you need large stops because because it's dailies. But you also have 100 point targets, and you're meeting them all. You know, you get this one, you get this one, you get this one. You get this one for like this is a 300 point target. This is the first trade that you fail. So like it's counted one, two, three, four, four out of one, five out of one, six out of one, and really seven out of one because this this continues, right? So since uh, last year, you have seven trades in a year. Obviously, obviously you don't have a lot of trades on the dailies, but seven out of one. If you're trading with uh, you know, 100 target, 200 stop, right? That's um, that's 500 pips uh, with very, very little effort on your part. Um, just you know, it's it's a great way to um, to run to run the uh, the book. If you wanted to go on a one hour chart, I haven't I haven't really looked at the one hour chart because I think this this works strongest on the longer term charts. But the one hour chart, the same principle, kind of really really well applies. Ignore the first signal, take the second one, make money, right? Take the third one, make money. Um, this is effectively whenever you get like this one and a counter signal and more, you can really you just count it as a continuation downtrend. Third signal, you know, make money. Um, what is this one? This may have choked again. No, I don't think it goes back. What is that? 79, 71.94 goes up against you to. Uh, yeah, if you had a 20 point stop, I guess, you know, you, you would eat it. But um, but if, it was, if your stop was a little bit wider, which I would, even on the hourly, I would give myself a little bit of a wider stop. Um, then it actually goes, what, 7.65 from, nine, yeah, I mean, it's huge. Even, even if you gave yourself like a, like a 30 stop, like basically that's, that's, that's actually a good way of thinking about this. So this is Kiwi, right? And this is, well, let me show you, show you what I have in mind. So the ATR on Kiwi is, sorry, this, I mean, you wanna go on a dailies. You always wanna go on a dailies. But the basic daily ATR on Kiwi is like 60, right? 60. And if you go into the hour chart, you have to give yourself, like in any trade, you gotta give yourself like half ATR. So it's 30. So if you give yourself 30, you're literally winning on every trade. Winner, 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 right? You know, like four trades in a row. Anytime you're at four, you know, four wins to one loss on a one to two risk reward, you're well, well ahead of the game. Um, Jonathan, what are you telling me? For those too stingy to pay for a TV, the free version has a three indicator limit. Any way to combine two of the indicators? No, Jonathan, pay the fucking money. Um, also, you know, I'm going to give you the, um, uh, because, you know, your lifetime, I'm going to give you the um, MT4s and empty fives so you'll have them you'll have them anyways um you know if you want to if you if, if you want to skimp on one i would get rid of the dip because dip is the least um least active and the least valuable you know so um so we're getting a trend buy in in nas right over here i was going to actually you know front run this move but i'm actually going to be i'm going to try and be disciplined here um and not chase this thing Actually, you know what? Let me keep this down here because um, I, I want to see a second buy signal over here uh, for the move.
Because look at, you know, look, look at the choppiness. Buy, sell, buy. Like this is, this is the precise reason. Like if you take the first one, you get stopped out. You take the second one, you get stopped out. You take the third one, you know, maybe it works. But at best, you're break even. But if, you, if this turns around down to a stop out, you have like three unnecessary stop outs. You just, you know, but the point is you did a lot of work for, un, you would have done a huge amount of work for unnecessary movement, right? Um, are we still going to try to see if we still have a chance here to make a, to create a trend? And this may actually go the other way. Like if, if, and if, if this drops the other way, it's just a perfect, perfect example of why you don't want to, you, you don't want to establish positions until you have um, a couple of signals in trend, you know, going your way. Because Chop City is the worst. On the other hand, you know, K, um, Dow continues to be pretty much to the downside um, the whole time. And um, s and is also established. You, there are two ways you wanna, you, you determine this sort of in a trend. One, you have a couple of signals in one direction. Two, there's a lot of white space between the cloud and, and the SMA that tells you that there's trend separation, right? So far, there's actually a little bit of white space on the green side, meaning that there's potential now for trend separation to the upside on the NAS and, um, you know, I kind of think this might work. I wonder if I should just, uh, I'm tempted just to scalp this to the upside, but I'm gonna be trying uh, trying to be good. Uh, if I was long 84, eh, you know, let's, uh, let's not play around. But we are like, you know, just trading either side of, of, of the open most of the day. Oh, you know what I haven't looked, I haven't looked at it all in a long, long time is Russell. When I look, and look at the Russell. Russell is so much smoother. Um, Russell was just a, like, it's been a pure buy. Remember, I, I remember I, I had a big article about how I like the Russell a lot more. But look how thin it is. Look at the, uh, look at the la lack of ticks. There's just no volume at all. Like this is seven o'clock and there are like all sorts of gaps in the volume. But Russell is just, you know, it's been a buy every time um, on the moves here. 2320, We don't really, we haven't really traded the Russell in ages, but uh, um, you know, but it, this has been the one index today that's been relatively strong. And as long as it's, you know, it's been staying above the, um, the moving average since five o'clock this morning, you haven't had a false signal here. And that's what you want. You want to catch that move. In the meantime, NAS is just really, you know, playing games to the downside. It may flush, it may actually fail. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad I didn't do anything stupid. Um, you know, and fail to the downside here again. Look at that, look at that. If nothing else, today is a great um, webinar in not jumping, um, you know, onto the first signal, right? Although if this candle, all right, sorry guys. I don't know why they gave me a trend by alert. That was like way, way, um, way over here. Oh, I, I think it's because, um, cause I have uh, all my, you know what? I'm sorry, let me, let me kill all my alerts. All my alerts are set off the, the wrong settings. They're just old alerts off the old settings. Sorry, I had to I had changed all the settings to new settings. 
I'm like, why is it giving me all these alerts that are not showing up? All right, I'm gonna kind of I'm tempted to trade this. I just took a little bit of a um, of a long on the uh, on the NAS just because you know it broke back up above the uh, the moving envelope. Probably going to be a big mistake, but you know we're bored. It's Friday, but probably a stupid stupid trade. So you know I, I will cut it if it's uh, if it's not if it if it stops working for us. I'm gonna give it to the uh, to the 200 SMA, and if it doesn't, you know, if it gets anywhere near there, I'm gonna blow out of it. If this trade reverses, I mean, it it, it, it isn't. So it might I might have to. This is a good example where I should be waiting for next candle, but. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. I was gonna say this trade finally give me a second buy signal. So like this, if this trade holds, that's actually a legitimate buy signal because now we have a turn momentum buy um, established in um, in NAS, and um, um, if this holds, you know, above the, it's got to hold though above the um, the cloud to stay that signal. Then then you know then it's worthwhile trading. I'm just getting you know, I got too eager on my moves here. Not there. Wow, that sucks. Didn't quite make it. So I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna blow out this one. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know try and front run this. It might it might still work. I'm just gonna blow out this this at um, minus three for me um, because it's not a legitimate signal. Let's let's wait. If, if we get a legitimate signal, we will get it. If it's not, then it's just really stupid to um, um, to stay in that trade. I was it was a stupid trade to start with, anyways. Um, until I get a signal, I'm just bored and I and I wanted a signal. Yeah, let's see if this if this confirms the signal. No, I mean, this is like the day today. You see, this is and this. I mean, and this is why the indicators are great, but it's also just shows you what kind of a what kind of a sloppy sideways Friday this is today. Um, you know, and, and why you 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 don't want to you don't want to fall for you know for every little tick that's faking you out. The nemesis of our structure. The, uh, the the mortal enemy of our of our setup is chop right, and the hardest thing for us to do is to stay out of chop. At least you know at least I have a methodology for how to stay out of chop. Whether I actually implement it is a different story. But at least you guys know the methodology, and the methodology is very good. It it really forces you to um, to filter out noise. Um, doesn't mean that it's going to work all the time, but it works a lot better than just trying to guess. Uh, no, Brenda, we look at all. My, my, my whole thesis is you look at, it, it really doesn't matter. If, once you're in trend, once you're in trend, any of these signals work. Any of these signals are good enough. They're not, you know, the whole point is the, the, the important part isn't the signal. The important part is establishing a trend. And the signals are there to help you do that. It's like their first function in life is to look, by the way, look how, how it just dove like a, like a, like a swan dive. 
it's a good thing, you know, it blew out of it. Um, the important thing right now, you know, for signals is first to give you an inkling of trend. And they do that by, by double confirming. You get two signals in a row underneath the, you know, the 200 SMA, and you have a strong indication that trend is in place. And then after that, they just give you entry points, you know? So, um, you yeah, know, so that's how it plays out. Um, and now, you know, now we're, now we'll go back down. Now we're just like, you know, and yeah, it really like, if, if you sort of pull back all you, what you see is range, 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 right? But look, we've, we've been able to completely avoid three consecutive stop outs, right? By just, um, by just not falling for the, uh, you know, for the, um, for the dumbass signals, you know, for the, for the easy signals. That's been like that's been the hardest part for me to figure out how to how to avoid chop, and the shorthand is with two consecutive signals. That's a really good shorthand for how you can do that. Um, so, oh, where am I? Oh, okay. So this is now like so. Basically, we're seeing the S and P and the Dow establish a deeper, longer um, downtrend. Right now, it's going to take a little, a little bit of a while for us to see if we can generate any kind of signals. It's going to be after we um, we go off air. But keep an eye, you know, keep an eye on this. If there is if there's a chance here for continuation, these are the two um, indices that have the strongest promise right now um, until Nasdaq figures out what it wants to do. Yeah. Okay, guys, um, I got I got to go because I got TV a little bit later. But um, hope you guys find it all really interesting. This really puts a bow on the, on the whole structure. It makes it a lot easier for us to, to then trade um, you know, on a continuous basis. And just remember that um, we're looking for those trend runs, the five, six um, trend signals in a row over a three, four hour period, whether that's um, pre-market New York, afternoon New York, um, even sometimes Asia. Um, everybody have a great weekend. Um, and enjoy it. Um, and I'll see everybody. For those of you who are going to be with us on the masterclass, I see everybody in the masterclass on Saturday. All right. Thank you, guys. Everybody have a great day. Bye bye.